Are you ready to make some yogurt? Because I am. We're going to get right into it today. This is going to be the second edition for the month of February, part of our homemade dairy product invitational for 2024. Last month, we did a chev style cheese. This month, we're making yogurt. So this morning, I took out a pint of my milk. I have it in half gallon jars. I use raw milk, that is what we prefer. You don't have to use raw milk. And I just poured out a pint because that's all the yogurt I plan on making today for no other reason than I have so much yogurt already in the refrigerator. So first things first, I am going to pour this pint of raw milk into a small saucepan I have here on the stove. And I'm gonna put it on a medium heat and we wanna heat that up to 180 degrees. So while that's heating up, it'll probably take I'm thinking between 10 and 15 minutes max, maybe less because I only have a pint's worth. It shouldn't take too long. Let me explain what we're doing. So when you're making yogurt, and maybe this is a process that you're familiar with and you've had great success with in the past, maybe it's not. For me, I have tried making yogurt many times over many years with <laughs> very little success. And I think that was attributed to a couple of things. I don't think I was following the process maybe correctly. I don't think I was using the right equipment, which I'm gonna go into that. And I probably didn't have a very good culture. So this is the culture we are using. This is from New England Cheese Making Company. It's called their Sweet Yogurt Starter Culture. Now all of their cultures have a name. This is Y5. So you can go on their website and look, um, but this is the Y5. In this packet came five of these little envelopes. This is the freeze dried culture. Now, when you're buying from them, which by the way, no affiliation with New England Cheese Making Company, but I really do like their products and their cultures. That is where I buy all of my cultures for cheese making also. You'll get this little uh, packet in it. It'll kind of tell you why five. Here is the culture the lot number for manufacture, and then when it needs to be used by. And so I keep my cultures, like the yogurt, the sour cream, the cream cheese, I keep them in the refrigerator only because I'm using these a little bit more often, but my cheese cultures I keep in the freezer. Either one is perfectly fine. What is in here is a powder. It's a freeze dried powder, freeze dried culture. And on the back of the packet, it's gonna tell you the directions. And so we are going to heat up the milk, oh, excuse me, 185 degrees Fahrenheit, 85 degrees Celsius. And then we're gonna cool it back down to 112. So we're gonna get it to 185, and then let it come down naturally to 112. It's only gonna take, again, 15 minutes maybe, 20, depending on how much milk you have, since I have little, again, little time. And so you may be asking yourself, why? Why are we heating it up to 185 and then bringing it down? Great question. I never understood this either, but the reason we do this, and it doesn't really matter if you're using pasteurized milk, low pasteurization or vat cultured milk, or raw milk. You are bringing it up to that temperature because you need to, this is gonna sound harsh, <laughs> but you need to kill off any other bacteria or microorganisms that could be in the milk that could compete with this. We're bringing it back down to 112 because that is the perfect temperature for this culture to thrive and grow and replicate and culture all of the milk into what we would know as yogurt. But it's also a great temperature for other cultures and bacteria that are already present just naturally within the milk. Milk is a, especially raw milk, it's a living thing. And so there's naturally other cultures, bacteria, microorganisms, and you just don't want them to win out over your yogurt culture. So we heat it up to eliminate any competing bacteria bring it back down to that perfect incubation temperature, and then the cultures start to really thrive. It'll take a few hours, and you're incubating it for that time, and then you get yogurt. It is so not difficult, and I hope that you'll try this at home. 
So I had mentioned that I've had some past failures and I really wanted to kind of point out why that was. Um, so heating the milk, especially on the stove, and I use my, <laughs> my temperature gun to really gauge the temperature here. That really wasn't the problem, I don't think, except when I tried to make yogurt in my Instant Pot. Now, I have an older model Instant Pot. It's at least seven or eight years old. And um, I don't know that the yogurt function gets to the correct temperature and then incubates to the correct temperature, right? I can't set the temperature. You press the yogurt bun it, button, it goes to boil, and that's kind of essentially what we're trying to do here. And then it comes down, you hit the yogurt button again, and then it's supposed to do the incubation. So that never worked for me because I don't think I was, I was just trusting that it was at the right temperatures and doing what I needed to do. And I don't actually think it got to the right temperatures because my yogurt never set, right? It was very liquidy. It never actually came together. So I find that heating it on the stove and then cooling it and making sure you're using a thermometer or a temperature gun of some sort, right? Something to monitor the temperature will give you the best start in this process. The second part of the process is the incubation. And so there's a few ways you can do the incubation. You don't need fancy equipment to do so. I have an Excalibur dehydrator that I've had I don't know, 15 or 17 years now. And that is what I use to incubate my culture. I'll take my trays out. I can set the temperature roughly to between 110 and 115. I can set the timer dial to six hours and then put my jar in just like this and have it incubate. And that is what I'm going to be doing today. But I realize not everybody has a dehydrator or a yogurt incubator in their house. And so there are a couple of other ways you can do this that I do think are successful. Number one is in your oven. Don't turn the oven temperature on, just turn your oven light on. You could even put in, like turn your oven on and put in a hot cast iron pan on the rack as well, right on the, um, the shelf and put your yogurt, maybe wrap it in a towel and turn the oven light on. And I will actually keep that at a really good temperature for incubation as well. You'll wanna monitor it. You're looking for anywhere between 110 to 115, depending upon the culture. This one says 112. But the incubation time is only about four to six hours. Now, last time I made this batch, it did take six hours, and so that's what I'm gonna go off today. But you could absolutely put a hot cast iron pan in your oven, turn the oven light on, wrap your jar in a towel, and place it in there, and just let it incubate that way. This has been going for about nine minutes. We're at 180, we're gonna to get to 185. I think we're pretty close. The second incubation method is very similar to the oven, but it uses a cooler. Uh, I, I'm envisioning this, right, with more like a hard-sided cooler, possibly a soft cooler you could use too. Again, you're probably gonna to wanna to put in some jars, some quart jars with hot water in them lid them up so they don't spill, but filled quart jars with hot water. And then in the middle, right, kind of surround your jar of yogurt or, or jars of yogurt and um, maybe wrap it in a towel, right? And then keep it incubated just on your counter, wherever you have your cooler with the hot water in it. And it can incubate and keep that really warm, hospitable environment that way. All right, we are at temperature. I am just gonna take this off of the stove. Turn the burner off, move it aside, and I'm just gonna let this cool naturally on its own. So you're gonna wanna do your yogurt. I like to start it as early as I can in the morning, right on a day where I know I'm home. And then once I get it in the dehydrator to begin the incubation process, I'm estimating around six hours for that to culture. Once that six hour mark is up, I'm just gonna put it in the refrigerator and then it can stay there until I'm ready to deal with it next. Once this milk cools down to 112, which again will probably take about another 10 to 15 minutes, I will pour my packet in. Now I am only doing one pint of milk. Again, that's what I wanted to do today. I didn't wanna to be yogurt overloaded. 
but this one packet can actually do up to two quarts. So you don't have to do a smaller batch like I am. And because I'm putting this whole packet in this pint, it may actually culture a little bit faster than six hours. But per packet, you can do up to two quarts of milk. We are at temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the cooled milk in my back in the original pint jar. Now this took about 20 minutes for it to come back down. I am gonna put my freeze-dried culture right on top. Now with anything freeze-dried, whether it be the yogurt, sour cream, or even cheese culture, you wanna just let it sit on the surface of your milk for just a minute or two because it needs to rehydrate before we start really mixing it in. Once it's been a few minutes, I'm just gonna put the lid on Make sure you're using a leak proof lid and give it a shake. Into the dehydrator, this is gonna go, or maybe it's into your oven or into the cooler. So I will check that in about four to five hours. And what you're looking for is when you tip the jar over, you will see some whey. You will see whey kind of on the outside, but in the middle, the whey should be surrounding. It's almost gonna look like a coagulated curd, right? So it's gonna, the milk is gonna kind of come together and the whey would be surrounding it. So if you tip it, you should absolutely see that mass. If you don't, you need to incubate longer. Five and a half hours. Just took it out of the dehydrator. I wanna show you what you're looking for. Do you see how it's not even coming up? <laughs> it is not liquidy. I can see the way, you wanna see like that yellowish clear way, but you still see the solid mass. Our milk is cultured, it is now yogurt. It's warm, it's like a warm little hug. I'm gonna go put this in the refrigerator and it's gonna stay there till probably sometime tomorrow when I can come back and uh, show you what to do next, what your options are. But once it's cultured, you wanna put it in the refrigerator so that it slows down immensely and does not keep culturing, and then it will be perfect to eat. It's been a good 24 hours that it has been in the refrigerator. Still very much a solid mass. Mm, smells so good. So, at this point, you have a couple of options. You can just eat it like this. Like this is pure, delicious yogurt. It's actually, I don't even know that I need to strain it. It looks, mm. <laughs> I may eat this for breakfast. Um, but if you have a little whey, maybe it's a little bit too liquidy for your, for your yogurt pleasures and you want to strain it more to get it more of the thicker kind of like a greek like consistency this is where i would go to this next step which is just take a bowl with some sort of sieve and um, cheesecloth it and then i would dump it now as i'm doing that right very little i don't even see any meaning liquid coming out Sometimes my yogurt is really liquidy. And so that's where I'd wanna do that, strain out that extra whey. It's just the extra whey that is surrounding the, the yogurt culture. And then you can put it back in and you have a much more thicker consistency. You could also take your yogurt, strain it into your cheesecloth, kind of tie this up with a rubber band and hang it, and that way more and more of the whey will drain out. It's really about the consistency that you're looking for, but this is really thick. Like I said, it smells great. This is probably the best batch I have made in a while, and it really has to do with getting it that 180-ish, 185 degree temp like we did on the stove, bringing it down to around 112, 115, putting the culture in, incubating it, 
at that desired temperature for four to six hours, maybe longer, depending upon how much milk you're trying to culture. Remember, this didn't take long, but if I were doing two quarts, which is what one of those packets of cultures would do, I would probably go more to the six to seven hour mark and do it in two quart jars or even four pint jars, right? You can divvy it up that way. And when you're ready to culture your next batch, go ahead and take about a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons of your already made yogurt, preferably not more than about a week, maybe 10 days old. The older it is, probably the weaker the culture is gonna to be to culture your next batch. So anywhere to seven to 10 days, hopefully not longer than that, take some of your yogurt to culture your next batch. And that way you can make your packets of freeze dried culture last a little bit longer. Now you'll be able to do this for probably anywhere from four to five times successionally. And then the culture may start to weaken. I have found this, this is just from personal experience. And then I go back to getting a brand new packet. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is so good. <laughs> I don't even need honey, granola, or jam, or anything else. Like, oh my goodness. That's really good. I hope you'll make your own yogurt. Let me know if you do. Remember, I used the Y5 culture from New England Cheese Making Company. Let me know what your experience is. And even if you're using pasteurized milk, still heat it up to that 180, 185, bring it back down to 112, 115. It doesn't really matter if you're using raw, low pasteurized or pasteurized milk, but you do need to stay away. And I talk about this in just about every cheese video when I have done that, stay away from ultra pasteurized milk. Stay healthy, stay well. I'll see you next time.